In this tutorial, we explore making AAA games inside Touch Designer. Only joking, we're going to explore using the Bullet Solver to do some fun interaction. We're inside the latest experimental build of Touch Designer, which as of today is 2019-10700. And I just want to play about with some of the new, they call it Bullet Solver, but it's essentially dynamic objects inside Touch Designer that you can apply force to and move. Sometimes you could compare it to a particle system, but it's essentially objects that you can give mass and weight to and create some pretty interesting stuff. So we're just going to have a quick play about with it and see what sort of things we can do. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the comp menu and we'll see on the right hand side we have five new operators, actor, bullet solver, constraint force and impulse force. And we're going to have a play about with all of these. Bullet solver is the main element. So a bullet solver constrains everything. So you can see if you bring in the default, we can start the simulation. We'll see that this torus has mass and it comes down and hits this a solid plate at the bottom. So this at the bottom is what we call static. It has infinite mass, which means it'll never move no matter how hard you hit it. And our torus string is weighted. It's, it has a, a physical represented weight. And when we start the simulator, gravity is applied to that weight, so it falls. And we can see the natural reaction by the way that it hits. And then we get the, the bouncing effect based on its collision with the block. Now, I just want to have a play about with this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to try and reimagine some really simple stuff from the 90s classic rollerball because it's a great example of commercial use for the bullet solving technology, if a bit simple. The main element is going to be our actors. So you have a bullet solver and inside a bullet solver, you have an actor. And as with the torus we just saw, an actor can either be static or dynamic. Static meaning that it's not really, really meant to move or, or have an interaction. It's more something that is interacted with. And then we have dynamic, which is a free moving object. It's something that force is actively applied to based on its weight and gravity and all those other factors. All right, we load a plain actor and so you can see we get an error and that's just telling us that we don't have any geometry data that we can use. In almost the exact same way that 3D comps work, what we need to do is we need to go inside and build our geometry. So I'm going to split my canvas up. On the top right, I'm going to have a network editor. And then bottom right, I'll just make it a text port for now. And I'm inside my first actor. So I want my first actor to be, let's just make it a single flat plane. So I'm going to make a rectangle, SOP. I'm going to make sure to turn on my display and render parameter. And <laughs> the first thing you'll notice is that it just fell away to infinity. And that's because we have our shape set to dynamic. If I set it to static, it's going to stay dead still. In its properties, it's not going to be able to be affected by the gravity, mass, or uh, forces. So back inside now, I can home this. And I just want to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to go to something like 20 and 20. And okay, so now we just have a perfectly plain flat square. I'm going to come up a level and we'll see that we're still getting an error. And the error is because the interactions between actors inside the bullet solver happen based on collision. And collision is based on a shape's geometry. There are a few options we have. So if I activate this viewer and zoom out a bit, and then turn on display collision shape. You can see there's four tiny dots in the dead center. And that's because those are the four dots of my original square before I expanded it. So that's a one unit by one unit by one unit. And that means that if I was to add another actor, it would only be able to interact with the middle unit of this shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinitialize my actor and you can see my four points snap to the edge. Sometimes, depending on the type of work you're doing, you might not want the shape collision to be the same as its view. So for example, I could add a sphere sop and use this as its collision. And so you can see that I'm now no longer seeing my four dots around the edge, but I'm seeing all these little red dots in the dead center. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to this a bit more when we're actually looking at interacting between our actors, but for now I can delete that. Realize this. So my shape is now its own collider. Basically this square knows that 
shapes can collide with it. I'm going to move it down slightly on the Z. So I'm going to move it down about two units. And I'm going to make another actor. And this actor is going to be dynamic. Inside of it, we're going to make a sphere. Again, display and render. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to come into my bullet solver geometry layer rather than down specifically in my actor. Now I have a sphere and I have a square. I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to reinitialize my actor. And that means that it will, and my orientation is wrong. So what's happened there is when I initialize my actor to give it its mass, it fell straight down. So I'm going to rotate. going to rotate my floor, reset this to zero, and move it down the different way. I thought I thought it was Y I wanted to be using, but I didn't like that. So now if I reinitialize my circle, you'll see that it falls onto my square, but it doesn't fall any further. And that's because it's now colliding with the other shape. As it's a circle, it, it will roll around slightly based on how it falls because it'll have a bounce and then it'll move on. To get exact information about what an actor is doing, we can introduce the bullet solver chop. We can have a look at it and we can see I'm able to get its exact XYZ position based on inside the bullet solver space. I'm then also able to get its rotations. So if you have a shape that wasn't a sphere and I can get relative velocities on both its movement and its rotation. So you can see that this is kind of balancing out on top of itself. It's not actually moving that far, but it is slightly off center. And the reason that that moved is because in properties, this has used global gravity and it has mass. So every second, the global gravity is negative 9.8, the, the sort of the understood constant for gravity and it has a mass of one. So it'll fall negative 9.8 units per second that this is falling. Have I set it to 10 and then reinitialize this? It won't fall any faster, but it means that it will have a more stable mass. And you can see the values of its moving are much, much smaller.